How's it going? So here you have a more exciting project this time. So welcome to our project. Up until now, we have designed, tried, failed, tried again, failed, and now we're on our third try. So that's <laughs> so, the typical engineering yeah, process. pretty much. Right now, we have two of these discs, and we're going to get it working with these motors that we currently have. It came with this gearbox attached to it, and now we filed a key into it, and we're ready to try this one with this disc. Last week, we used this motor here with the gearbox attached. Unfortunately, this reduced the RPMs, which enabled us to actually get the lift that we were looking for. How we resolved that, we removed the gearbox, and now we're able to get the RPMs to actually get a slight lift off the motor. Now here's what we have this week. Fits right in there. All right. <laughs> Does he want to try it? Pretty much, yeah, let's go ahead. So we're using the nominal voltage, which is 24 volts, and it should be spinning roughly about 2,800 RPMs with the weight on it. It, it kicks. Hands. It does kick. All right, the the initial torque kicks. So it, all right, you hold ground. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Success. All right, oh, you got it. So this is what happens when you put too much torque on a screw. It kind of shears off. Ready? Bring it in. Okay. Ready? Three, and two, one. Uh -huh. Felt it? Yeah. What we're going to do to actually compensate for the back resistance that it's creating yeah. with the uh, hall back to right effect is actually um, exceed the nominal voltage, which will kill the motor. In my experience, motors you can safely over voltage up to like two times, as long as you're not running them for like forever. We were at 36 yeah. volts. Yeah, it's fine. We can probably go up to 48. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, for the, the, the amount of the load that we're going to put on it, I mean, we might, we might need it. I don't know about that. Oh, we need to know where we're keeping this. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. That's a good question. Mm, I'll just put it on the second. Mm. What was that? It's the weak side, don't worry. <laughs> that doesn't look like the weak side. That's the strong side. That's the strong side? <laughs> oh, that is not moving. Oh, I messed it up. That I messed is up. not the weak side. I goofed. The disc is stuck. Yeah, this probably. See if we can do it Let's the same way. Before. Here, before. this happened before. Was that crack in there already? Hope not. That's bad. <clears throat> One, two, three, and push. <laughs> we scratched them. Oh, up. Mitchell, never again. Never again. Hi guys, we come bearing more gifts. We're probably gonna scrap that lovely uh, contraption, and we're gonna go with these guys instead. So once upon a time, <laughs> we started with a much smaller scale thing. We took a look, we're like, wait a second, this is not gonna work. So we went through probably eight-ish designs until we found the one that just seemed the most right. So the nice thing with this is we can literally drill out this a bit, mount the motor on, put the four holes, done. And I think we're gonna need six, so. <laughs> To actually get this working? Yeah, potentially. Okay. If, if we want anything more than a child to ride it. So. Okay. <laughs> we finalized the way we're going to mount the levitation discs to the motors, and then we've also changed the way we're actually mounting it to the board. So we've got this nice thick U-bracket, uh, which will take the load no problem. You could probably put a couple hundred pounds on this without any issue. We're going to start with one at the front, one at the back. If that's not enough force, then we're going to add one in the middle and then we'll have six levitation discs. So the first step is attaching all these guys to the plates. I got this one pretty much set. I just need to make the holes a little bit bigger once we get that one. That's what you call professional. On, off, on, off. Half the power box is done. Well, the trucks are done. Dude, that looks so cool. How, how does that sturdy feel? Well, stand on it. Stand on it. Stand on it. All right, now we put the pattern box in between. It's gonna take away my room for sick ollies. All right, let's get this box mounted. We still gotta make sure the motors are turning the right way and 
it's gonna be a fun night ahead, that's for sure. So basically what Mitchell was telling me is we're using four, two of these, right? Yeah. When we have two together in a series, they are putting out 24. And so we need to get another one of those and put them together to get 48. So that's how many volts we need to get out of the batteries? Right. You can put two of these per wheel, no problem, space-wise. Yep. Yeah. That's double the power we need. The only thing is that when we are overvolting like this, we could significantly shorten the lifespan. Let's just do it, I don't care, like, just put as much voltage as we need to get it, uh, the speed up there. We don't have time to redesign the whole um, project. Then we should just do what we can to get the concept done. I was hesitant because, like, it's a hoverboard. If we get it working, we want it to last, you know? But if we don't exceed the nominal voltage, we're not gonna get the, uh, the speed we want. The way to think of electricity is like water, going through a pipe. You have current, which is like how much water is actually flowing through it. Uh, and then you have the voltage, which is like pressure on the water. So the more pressure you put through a pipe, the more the pipe wants to burst. It's just the same with these. It's like we're shoving a bunch of pressure against it and we're basically upping it to 33 from 24. And so that can cause potential damage and it could just blow up in their face. So the, the probability of this going boom is very high. So it could get pretty messy here. So 36 volts works, but what'd you do? It gets pretty warm. Mm -hmm. So it all depends how long we want to run it for. And Let's run it for about <laughs> five seconds and then hopefully nothing blows oh, up. I was running it for like a minute straight. So. Oh, okay. There's our 36 volt pack. So we have four of those. I don't oh, think okay. we're gonna try 48, judging by how hot that got. We got the board almost fully assembled. The four hover discs are almost done. We just have to grind off the screws, mount the motors, and plug it in. Hey guys. Hey. hey. How's it going? It's going really good. good. Oh my gosh. We've made progress. Yeah. So there's like no trucks or anything. We just went straight with these. Yeah. These yep. worked out. And we have all four discs printed and, and magnets are yep. in them. Yeah. We're literally, once we install these, we can turn it on. Yep. Actually, let, let's do a quick pre-test test. Okay. Plug all the motors in. Plug all the motors in, see which way they spin. What is the likelihood that we turn this on and all the magnets just go flying out and hit us in the face? Very. 90%. Yeah. Nah, I'm scared. All right, clockwise, counterclockwise. Clockwise, counterclockwise. This should work right. then. Looks great. Steven. Oh my god! There you go, son. <laughs> Is that a magnet? I don't think it was no. a magnet. It no. looked like it was a bolt. It hit something. Was there a bolt sitting in here? Did we lose a bolt on there? No, I think no, it was, a, there was a washer down here. I think it was this washer, because all I saw was just yeah, okay. this Why? Why is this happening? Let's do it again, let's do it again. All right, everyone clear? Oh, is he doing it again? Yep. Again, again, again. Oh my gosh, this thing is a death trap. Looks awesome. <laughs> Who wanted you to do the hoverboard? Was it me? Because, oops. All right. Hopefully this isn't a funeral procession. Do we need to hold it? Or? No, we're, we're just doing one test. Everyone back up. Yeah, everybody back up. Woo! Hoverboard, woo! We're going to lift it up. All right. We're going to turn it on for like a second. And then we're going to slowly lower it and see if we feel anything. OK. Um, don't let it touch the ground. Yep. Lower it. It slows down pretty fast. It's expected. You ready? Yep. A bit higher. <laughs> I felt something. Did you feel anything? Oh, I got a little bit of a. You guys got to lower it down. Jacob, you're a little higher. Yeah, yeah okay. you got to lower it down almost evenly. Perfect. Yeah, if you don't okay. evenly lower it, it's going to, one side's going to get low lift and the other side's just going to stay there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ready? So this time I'm gonna turn it on. I'm gonna hold my finger on the switch, but we're gonna lower it down and see if we can feel something. All right, I'm ready. Oh my God. Your side seems better than mine. Oh, that's so cool. That was almost Woo. all on its own there. That's only 24. That was 24 volts. So we can go okay. up to 36 still. So because that one warped, it was touching and it was getting too close, and that's what we were afraid of. Warped? 
It, yeah, it, because of the, when they grinded it, the whole disc kind of sagged. Yeah, in. but it should still end up actually like correcting itself for the most part. Okay. We definitely had some levitation. Not very strong levitation. Again, these motors seem like they might not be strong enough. We're about to attach a third battery, so it'll be up to 36 volts, or about 50% over the rated voltage for the motors, which might give us enough to float the board by itself. We're likely gonna have to go up to six or even eight motors of this size, or again, get even bigger motors. Peanut gallery ready. Yes. All right. If you like this video and you want to follow along with our adventure, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the little bell so you get notifications for the next episode. And if you haven't caught the last ones, check it out. They're all right here. You can view them all right now. We'll see you next time.